Welcome investors, it is time for another thrilling installment of Q&A where my Patreon members ask questions and I, based upon my 28 years of investing experience and study of Mark Minervini, Charles Harris, Dan Weinstein, et al, answer or at least attempt to answer the questions. Not investment advice, of course, but I do hope that you will find the information that I provide instructive. And if you want to ask me a question uh, during the Q&A sessions, please consider subscribing to my Patreon. There's a seven day free trial link in the description below. I show my current portfolio and my focus list each weekend. And with that, let's get to the first question. Okay, here's a question from Tony. Uh, he wants to know about the new ANTS indicator on the MarketSmith, sorry, now called market surge charts, hoping you elaborate on this a little and how to analyze it. Okay, Tony, yeah, I know all about the ANTS um, indicator, David Ryan's ANTS indicator. He's talked about it um, multiple times over multiple years. I just found for you guys a, a little IBD live excerpt where he talks about the indicator here, this was about a year ago. This is him right here. Who the heck is David Ryan? Three-time U.S. investing champion um, early on. I think it was in the 80s. He's the only three-time champion that I know of. If if I'm if you know of someone, let me know in the comments. Mark Minervini, of course, two-time U.S. investment champ. So let me tell you the characteristics. So actually, first, what what is the purpose? of the ants pattern. So the purpose is um, when a stock breaks out, makes a move, we want to distinguish between those stocks that are going to make a nice pleasant 10 to 20 percent um, swing move, so to speak, and those that are going to go on to make a 50 percent, 100 percent, 500 percent move. And uh, certainly there's some luck and art involved, but one of the the telltale signs is the ants indicator. Now there are three um, guiding characteristics. All right, I scribbled down the characteristics on a note card here. I apologize for my uh, atrocious handwriting. I wrote that in quite a hurry. But let's go over them, and uh, I'll show you two examples on market surge. Boy, it's going to take a take me a while to to get used to saying that. I was I've been a market surge. Um, subscribers since it was called Daily Graphs. I think that was in the late 90s. Anyway, here are the three characteristics. Number one, so you need a breakout out of some sort of uh, base trading platform, etc. And then over a 15 day period, you want to see 12 or more positive days, up days. And you want the volume, the trading volume, to be 20 to 25 percent above average i the the bigger the better honestly so volume 20 percent or more above average and then you also want to see a 20 or maybe 25 percent price increase over that 15 day period now um you don't in my opinion and this isn't david ryan talking this is me talking in my opinion it, if it makes a spectacular move during this time, then it's probably going to need to come back, come back in for quite a ways, either in price or in time. So it's actually better if it makes kind of a 45 degree angle up versus the SMCI, um, what, ski jump? We can look at that one too. So what does this look like in the wild? Here is the one year chart of Uber Technologies. And here you see, this is kind of a base on base. You've got a base, oh, hold on a second. You got a base right about there and you've got a base right here. So here we have the breakout and the computer has start putting in these ants. This is why it's called ants because um, first per people and now the computer puts in these tick, tick marks. That means at least 12 of the last 15 days um, have been up. And you can have these ants anywhere, but we specifically want to see them um, in the early part of a breakout, in my opinion. So if you counted these one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, etc., you will see at least 
uh, 12 of these 15 days are up volume is elevated and um, the price has moved from 50 to sorry 40 to 55 or something like that and there you have your ants so what is going on with this um, your aunt Ethel can buy her 10 shares with the click of a mouse of a mouse button but an institution needs to um, slowly accumulate they can't buy all at once or they will run the price up um, they'll spike the price so they buy over days often weeks sometimes months so when you see elevated um, volume day after day um, after a breakout or during a breakout that's a sign that one or more sorry my nose is itching one or more institutions are accumulating why is this good um, because the institutions the mutual funds the, the institutions are the ones that move the price not Aunt Ethel and secondly they do a bunch of fundamental research they get clearance from their boss to buy the stock the last thing they want to do is sell right they want to acquire their shares over the course of days or weeks and then they want to hunker down for months if they can possibly even for multiple quarters so when you see ants um, you, you don't want to just blindly plow in there but it's a good chance it's a good sign that the stock is going to go significantly higher and so far as you can see uber has now hopefully you got in on this original base or you bought right here on this breakout if not when you see the ants here you don't just um, come piling in when it's overextended wait for some sort of base and in this case I would wait for the bounce off of the 50 day and I would buy it right there maybe add to your position right here let me show you one other one. this is M core group provides mechanical and electrical construction services and as you can see um, here is a nice cup let me draw it in for you here something like that nice little here's your cup here's your handle breakout and as you can see um, up here now it is starting to show the ants you got elevated volume you got 12 or 15 um, days up and you got a 20 or higher percent price move now this is not viable this is overextended I actually own this one and yeah okay as you can see I bought it right here this is on my patreon portfolio here I bought it right here and I actually sold it into strength here so even though it's starting to print some ants with the elevated volume and all that this is not viable in fact this is overbought wait patiently for it to form at least a three weeks tight or come back in and retest near the 50 day uh, etc etc we we can't chase right so if you're not in be patient stocks that go on big runs often set up four or five times SMCI also as you can see nice little saucer base here the heck there we go I was having trouble drawing in the base a saucer base here huge blast off this is one of the most spectacular breakouts I've ever seen from three oh I don't know 350 to 1200 or something and here's your ants these little black dots now we need in my opinion we need this to quiet down and give us some sort of trading platform this isn't uh, addable um, this isn't viable in my opinion right now and what happens if you don't have market surge it's okay then you just use your eye right here's uber here's our nice double bottom base like this little shakeout here here's our breakout and look let me turn that off and so here's our our big volume we can just eyeball that that's not Aunt Ethel buying shares big volume and here is our um, up days one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve thirteen fourteen etc and you can um, spot ants on your own all right Karen has a couple questions here let me answer two you have three let me answer two and then I'll go to some other people and maybe come back for your last one if I have time we'll see dinner is gonna be ready soon uh, and I can't be late for dinner anyway hi Joe can the same trading rules we are using here be used for cryptocurrencies 
or are they different from stocks? Karen, absolutely anything, in my opinion, that is traded in an auction format, supply and demand, it's going to be affected by um, human psychology, by fear and greed and panic and all of those emotions. And that's what causes um, the ebb and flow that creates these chart patterns. Let's just look at um, Bitcoin, for example. So here's the Bitcoin uh, five-year chart. I did a YouTube video on Bitcoin a few years ago, not a few years ago, a few months ago, um, doing technical analysis, analysis on it. And even though it's a digital coin, not a um, company stock, you can see here is a uh, textbook cup with handle way back here in 2015. By the way, I'm not going to describe, explain what makes these cup with handles because I just did in my most recent video. I will try to put a link in the description and in the comments of that video if I remember to do so. But yeah, here's a cup with handle. Um, here is kind of a double bottom. You've got first bottom here, the second bottom here. Here you've got a head and shoulders within this double bottom. That's a fractal pattern within a pattern. Now technically a double bottom, you want the second V to undercut the first, um, but oftentimes a pattern will work without being perfectly formed like in a um, William O'Neill textbook. And here's your double top. You draw a line across the neckline. You sell or you go short when it breaks the neckline. And now we got a nice cup here and a pretty nice handle. Broke out of the handle. And now it's up here at all time highs. Probably it's going to pause out, right? Probably it's going to make a handle or it's going to come back in for a third. So in my opinion, absolutely, you will see these um, technical chart patterns appearing over and over again in many different things, including um, the alt coins. And this goes back way back. If you go back a hundred years and find some old um, stock stock chart books, you'll find the same patterns. Why? Because human psychology hasn't changed yet. Okay. And Karen also says, could you please explain the sell rules for power plays for both cases, loss and profit? Explain more in detail. I'm not sure what you mean about loss and profit. Do you always buy full positions right away for power play? breaks out. So the easy answer to that last part is I'll let you know uh, in hindsight what I should have done. In real time, it's it's much more difficult. Um, it depends on a lot of things. Most specifically, it depends on the um, power of the market. If I'm watching the biotechs and five power plays have broken out and gone up 30%, then absolutely I'm going to put on a full position right away. If on the other hand, I watch five power plays and two of them break out and extend, but three of them squat and pull back into the pattern, two of them squat and pull back into the pattern, one of them squats, reverses, and blows out the bottom of the pattern, then I'm probably just going to put on a third or a half position, then put on the other piece the next day if it starts to extend or... Um, at the end of the day, if it finishes strong, etc. Now, let me explain the rules for a power play. It's pretty easy, actually. You just have to um, look at some examples and you'll get it. And <clears throat> this is a term that came from um, Mark Mitterveni. It's in his second book. There's a section on power plays. Let me see. I, I trade them a lot. Let me see if I can find a couple examples. Okay, this is a power play that you, uh, we, could potentially play um, right now. So here are the rules. You want months of dead flatlining price action. This is much better um, than a prior uptrend or if a stock has been in a steep downtrend. Basically, the stock's dead. And then there's some news event. Maybe it's company news. Uh, maybe it's, I don't know, it's company news, whatever and the stock blasts off and it goes up at least 100% in less than two months. So here, basically, you got a blast off from seven 
to 16 in um, less than two months. The bigger, the better, really. And then, so that's step one. Step, that's step, step one, dead press action. Step two, um, rock it up 100%. And sometimes you'll get a flagpole like this. Other times you'll get a gap up. I'll show you this one in a minute. And then equally as important is you don't want much give back. Now, this is an art, um, not a hard and fast rule, but basically uh, the less it gives back, the better. Um, if it gives back more than 25%, then there's going to be definitely a, a lower success rate. Look at this one. It's only It's gone up over 100%, and now it's given back less than 10%. So all of these guys, not all, but most of the buyers that bought down here, they're still holding. What does this tell you? This tells you that they think it's going to go higher. And then you wait at least 10 days, and then when it breaks out of the pattern, um, you can buy. Now, this was a potential buy point, but it's pretty wide and loose here, right? I like this a lot better. We got some demand hammers, got some tightening, nasty little shakeout to end, and then boom, uh, breakout. Put on a half position here, put on full position here. Now, it's squatting a little bit. I don't like that. Um, we will see if this um, continues upward. This is a mining company. Maybe it's taking advantage of the higher um, gold prices. Let me show you one that I played really, um, that I played very successfully on my Patreon. This is SLNO, a biotech. Relatively dead price action. Granted, it is was trending up a little bit. Dead price action, 700% move up. 33% move down, a little more than we wanted, but then it tightened up, tightened up, broke out, came into supply, made a great little handle here. I put on half a position, should have put on a full position there. I don't know why I did not. Sold it for a 64% gain, and it's not doing anything wrong technically as long as it stays above this 50-day moving average. Um, we certainly could have been continue to hold it. Here's another one that I bought. Um, this one I'm currently in I point. The price action is not as dead as you'd like. Here's your flagpole, nice symmetrical triangle flag, breakout, sitting on a decent little gain. It's testing the 50 day moving average. We'll see what it does. Okay, good questions. I got to come back to your third question. Let me answer some other questions here. Let's see who had the first question. Okay, Charvel, or is it Charvel? I'm not sure. Please look at VLO. I think it's a multi-month VCP ready to break out. VCP is Mark Minervini's bread and butter. The volatility contraction pattern. This is, I'm pretty sure this is an oil stock. Yeah, um, oil, energy exploration and production. Let's zoom out here. 10-year chart. It's in, been in a choppy uptrend. Actually, a lot of these energy companies are much more cyclical. This is in a pretty decent uptrend. If you have the stomach for it, it looks like you could do a long-term hold, couldn't you? Here we've got kind of an ascending base. Usually we don't like to see bases, um, what's the term, wedging up like this. So that's a negative, although it's you can be more forgiving of that in the early stage bull market like we're in. Here you've got kind of the primary base, shoulder head, shoulder draw, line across. This is almost like a high handle, if you think of it that way. Now let's zoom back out. One year chart is a little bit of a mess. I think I see your VCP though. Let's draw this in. Let's get bold. Let's make a big line. Just go black. Okay, so you got uh, kind of a cup with handle. Energy stocks are often messy, especially big caps. They don't make pretty patterns often. But in any case, you got kind of this. Um, <laughs> oh gosh, we can call it a cup with handle. It's not really, but here's your cup, okay? Like so. And I suppose you're looking at a large, a medium, a small, a smaller. How about if it gives us another smaller, another smaller, and then away it goes. That's what we want to see. Um, the price of oil is creeping up. 
Oil stocks are doing better. I'd love to see it build out like this for another handful of days. Give us a nice tight area to trade off of. Buy the breakout, put the stop right beneath it. Is that the 50 day? If you can stretch, maybe you do a stagger one here, one beneath the 50 day. Let's look at the numbers. Feel, oh, uh, refiner. Numbers are poor. Yeah, and that's often the case. Often energy stocks are going to move um, before their numbers are strong, before their earnings and sales numbers are strong. And then they tend to top when their fundamentals look great. Very profitable company, though. Look at that $15 a share. Dividend. 3% dividend. Hey, that's nothing to sneeze at. And let's take a look just for fun. Let's look at my partner here, Seeking Alpha. Um, I'm partnered with Seeking Alpha. They are an amazing database of news articles, analysis articles, transcripts, um, fundamental information. And let's just glance at the headlines of a few, three of their analysis articles. Riding the refinery wave. Why should Valero, Valero be on your radar? It's a hold. More valuations. This guy says it's a buy. Even Valero's finances are vulnerable. This person says it's a whole hold. So you could um, watch the technicals and you could click on some of these articles and read them and build your fundamental understanding. If you're interested in gaining access to this, I've got a link to it in my um, the description of the video. And they also do this thing called Alpha Picks, where they pick um, stocks using quantitative analysis. As you can see, it's blowing the S&P 500 out of the water. I got a link to that in the description as well. Now let's jump back. So yeah, those are my thoughts on VLO. Uh, not the prettiest pattern in the world. Definitely could work though. Definitely could work. Like I said, it does seem like oil is... Um, doing better and the long-term trend in that particular stock is up uh william sanchez one of my most loyal patreon members says can you run through brbr starting october 2023 okay we're gonna have to get in the wayback machine for this one here's my patreon portfolio i'm actually in the stock i've been in it since august um i've made a nice gain on it from, oh gosh, 38 to 60, almost 100% gain. But you want to look at it from October 23rd. All right, 2000, what'd you say, 23? 23. So we are looking right here. So let's just mark this up. Why not? This will be fun. I use stockcharts.com for my um, annotations and... If you subscribe to it, put my email in the referral box, Joe's Investment Express, gmail.com. Okay, so um, IPO'd in 2019. And even though this thing took off from the get go, you want to resist the temptation. Um, I mean, if you want to nimbly swing trade it or something, fine. But usually a stock will set up in a primary base. There's some initial euphoria. And then the institutions spend a few months studying it. And if it passes muster, then they buy it. So here is your initial base. If you want, let's go even farther back than 2023. Initial base, this is called a cap pattern. Broke out of the cap. You got kind of a rounding top here. And then you've just got a real um, consolidation zone here, right? So it was in this consolidation pattern for over a year, broke out, gave you a little bit of a handle to trade off of. Let's zoom in on this. Okay, so now you're zoomed in. <clears throat> so you certainly could put in, put in a half position here. You got a little bit of supply to deal with, although granted, that's a year back. Uh, the, the William O'Neill rule is if it's um, 18 months back, the supply, the trap buyers are usually gone. This is not quite that far back. So you would want to be, like I said, a little more careful, maybe put on a half position. Didn't really give you much of a handle here. But now you've got a traditional cup, albeit an ugly one, 
and here's your handle retested the 50 day and that is where um you'd want to be buying bouncing off of this 50 day then it gave us another another little base right here are we getting to october we're getting there and another little base and now um <clears throat> one thing you'll notice is that as the base as it moves up and forms bases they tend to get shorter and more erratic so um bigger base um and well okay this is erratic yeah um but certainly a bigger base nice big move pretty tight um calm looking base pretty nice calm looking base but shorter short bases are more, more prone to fail now we've got this 50 day retest another 50 day retest and see how it's kind of unraveling that's our concern that this stock is either almost done running up or certainly needs to put in a bigger base and if we look at it myopically here on the one year chart here is um october 2023 so here's that nice base we looked at earlier pretty nice base to buy off of pull back buy right there do a little add-on right here um and really that's about it up here this just kind of looks like an extended stock to me now um granted you can try a play off the 50 day right here but this is look how far this is from the last decent base well 30 percent you we would be pushing our luck buying it here although we certainly could buy it here put a tight stop right there so right now this is a stock i would love to be in which i am but it's not a stock that i would be buying right here i hope that um helps william okay e money i bought sell well i bought sell uh, celsius i'm in that one too 227 at 67.8 got stopped out 229 63.7 missed the run up was this bad luck or was this avoidable let's take a look so here's another stock from my patreon portfolio celsius okay you let's click on it so we can use our oh, one second okay now we can use our inspect tool 227 february 27 bought it right there right here got stopped out 229 right there okay so um a couple things so number one you bought it right there that's just a little bit extended the the better day to buy it was the day before off of this little tight platform it seems like a small nuance but when you're running tight stops you really have to nail those entry points or you will get stopped out so you bought it right here make sure that's right to 27 and then you got stopped out so let's see how tight your stop was here let's say you bought it at the top of the day so six percent yeah <laughs> boy sometimes you're the hammer sometimes you're the nail and you you got nailed now uh first of all question well not question comment i would not obviously it worked out in this instance but i would never buy a large position right before earnings you bought um you know two days before earnings that alone is risky it's far better um to wait wait for it to um if it opens quietly pulls back in and then takes off then you buy it the day of earnings not right before earnings if it gaps up then you got to wait for it to set up again but that's for another video so the other thing you could have done was do a stagger stop i see that's about five percent which is about my average um stop but you could have done half at five and half at 10 for 7.5 or half at four half at eight and then you would have only gotten stopped out of um half the position now the other thing is see i played this bounce off the 200 day if you have an ascending 200 day you can start it right there when it breaks the the left side of the base you can add to it right there so i got in much earlier should have added right there but i didn't because earnings was coming um, recently sold a piece so you did have some bad luck you barely got snapped out of there but um yeah 
buy buy earlier and consider a staggered stop. E money thoughts on X O M chart. That's another um, oil and energy. Exxon Mobil. I don't really like this one, honestly. So many eyeballs on it. It's crowded trade. Uh, it's old company. Um, I don't think it moves very quickly anymore. Now, now watch me bite my tongue because it moved from 30 to 120 in a couple of years. Oh, okay, so I take that back. But I would rather be in an energy company that's less well known and then be in it as people discover it. Just looking at the monthly, uh, you got kind of a V bottom. And if we draw a line across here, it's making kind of a cap pattern sitting on top there weekly you've got kind of a trading range 3.6 percent dividend that's nice um one year chart looks pretty ugly not gonna lie let's just take a look here uh yeah so this is pretty ugly i really don't like this i would consider buying it if the oil stocks continue continue to run and it got way up here and got above all of this congestion. So maybe if it runs up here and then, oh, what's the dog? It makes this a little handle right here and then breaks through. That's where I would play it. But I, I don't really like this one right now. And eMoney has got a casino money play. Uh, every weekend at the end of my Patreon videos, I do a few moonshots. These are stocks that might go up 10x, but they, they also very likely will go to zero. And so if we want to, we can throw a little casino money at them. That is money we would ordinarily be um, spending at the casino. PASG Biotech. I'm not familiar with this one. I just pulled it up. Pre-revenue biotech treatment for rare nervous system diseases. It definitely, okay, any stock under um, $5 is inherently risky that's um very volatile and they often run out of money and go to zero um stocks under ten dollars are inherently volatile so if from five to ten dollars uh, um not as risky but definitely volatile and hard to hold on to with a tight stop anyway um that being said you have definitely some power play-esque movement here from 0.7 to one Point seven relative strength of 98 this has the look of most biotechs are like this they lose money they lose money they lose money they go down um, for years months or years eventually they go bankrupt or they um, achieve whatever they're trying to achieve and they start running upward so I like <laughs> obviously I like the recent price action since December so right now we just have a terribly extended stock there's no i mean you got this little teeny platform squatted today if it opened to if it got above 1.75 you could put on a teeny tiny piece with a stop down here these can be deceptive let's see how big yeah so that's eight percent with like a nine percent stop um is there really I don't really see a spot that I would have bought this one. Um, I mean, you got a little teeny flag here. In hindsight, obviously, you could buy it right there. But this is one to keep an eye on. If it builds up a three weeks tight, um, gives us just a nice uh, tight flag or pennant, which looks like this, to trade off of, then we could try it with some casino money. And then if it's successful, you can always add to it at proper buy points. Um, if some stocks go up for years, right? So maybe you're in on the ground floor. That's a fun casino stock, though. Let's add it to my list of casino stocks. I'll do that right now. I don't know why. I don't know why I'm calling it a casino stock. Uh, I call these moonshots, based on the 1960s um, space race where they successfully made it to the moon. All right. The last question. Let's get back to. Looks like I did get to your question, Karen. Um, would you please give me give me feedback on my trade of MMYT? Bought on March 1st, stopped out March 5th. Bought March 1st, stopped out March 5th. The great thing about that trade is it didn't take you long to get stopped out. 
Um, if you're going to get stopped out, it's great to get stopped out the same day, the next day, a few days later. What really sucks is when you hold a stock for three weeks and then you get stopped out. Why? Because you could have employed that money elsewhere. All right. Now, make my trip limited. Let's look at it technically and then maybe we'll look at the fundamentals real quick. Bought on March 1st. March 1st. Okay. Um, stopped out March 5th, which is right there. Yeah. Okay. I don't like... Um, I hate to be... What? <laughs> well, I don't like that buy point. Um, 62.35. Yeah. So you bought it right about there. So this is really um, an extended stock. Let's go back. So let's look at the five-year chart. Here is your, here's your base, all right. You got a little bit of a cap pattern. You got a double bottom cap right there. And that's about it. This looks like just a stock that would have been great to get in right here, right here, sorry, um, or maybe right here. And now this is just a stock that's run up. This is a great stock. Um, to be in, but not a stock you want to be buying so late in the game. Let's zoom back out. So, um, this is kind of, I mean, here you got a trend channel, all right? So you certainly could have tried to buy the bottom of the trend channel um, and or swing traded it all the way up here. Got a little bit of a channel, but you got some widening. See this fan action? That is the opposite of what you what you want to see. I want to, at minimum, I want a tight area to trade off of. Like, see this little tight area? Oops. Because then I can buy it right here, put my stop right under it, and I don't lose much um, if it doesn't work. But here, you're, this platform is wide and loose. You've got to put your stop really, if you bought it here, you need to put your stop way down here at like 12.5% to know that um, whether it worked or not. And this, if we're calling this a base, this is way too wide and loose, way too short. Granted, you do see some nice buy volume, but I would argue this might be climax, climactic action, not um, healthy base action. So, like I said, great stock that I'd love to be in it, that I would love to be in earlier. Like right here, put on a half position, add right here, etc. But not a stock I'd be buying way up here. Now don't feel bad. <laughs> you know, I've been doing this for like um, almost 30 years and uh, that's a mistake I did over and over again was getting in extended stocks. Let's just glance. Wild monthly chart, new high, relative strength 97, no dividend. The numbers... I like the earnings numbers a lot. Triple digits, all four years. So this is a stock I still would like to get in, but I would be patient and wait for a nice base to set up. Like I said, something like this, or at minimum like this, and or maybe you try to grab it on a bounce off the 50 day. See this bounce off the 50 day? And let's just see what my partner, Seeking Alpha, has to say. One second, let me see. Let's just see. MMYT, make my trip. Um, Make my trip, sales growth remains impressive. This person said it was a buy February 8th, hold buy, lofty valuation, insider selling sell, so we could do some fundamental analysis. Uh, with these, read the news, etc. All right, you guys, it is time for dinner. I'm going to sign off. Thanks for your questions, Patreon members. And those of you who are not Patreon members, I encourage you to check out my uh, Patreon portfolio and focus list. Seven-day free trial. Link in the description. Happy trading, everybody.